Welcome to Confessing the Blues, a podcast about the blues music that matters to dancers. This is episode number seven for February 2010. My name is Keith Big Papa Shapiro from Austin, Texas. And I'm still Jonathan Pichon, still from Dallas, Texas. And we have a great month of stuff coming up for you, a great short month of February. We've got uh, just a reminder of some events we've got coming up. We've got some fantastic new music, and hopefully you're listening to this around the time of the that we put it out because uh, some of this stuff is going to go off sale pretty soon. We've got a recap of the Grammy winners. We've got my uh, slightly late Valentine's Day feature. We've got <laughs> slightly late. Um, hey, you know, if you love her, you love her still, I hope. Uh, At least love it. Love it by parts. Love it by pieces. That's right. We finally get around to answering Henrik's uh, question about work songs which he asked us sometime last year, like around episode two or three. So uh, better late than never. And we finally have some audience feedback. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in this month. If you do have any feedback, make sure that you send it our way to info at confessingtheblues.com or call us on our voice line at 608-432-5837. That's 60theblues. We also wanted to mention some upcoming events coming up in the near future here. First, Mile High Blues Fest, March 26th to 28th, up in Denver, Colorado. Go to milehighblues.com for information on that. Also coming up in Austin is Blues Shout. April 16th to 18th, go to bluesshout.com for information because there's too many DJs and instructors for me to list. Um, If you're not going, you're a very sad panda, or you will be when you realize that you didn't go. Um, <laughs> every, you're, everybody that you know or want to know is going to be there so come did check you it just out. say sad panda i said sad panda R- really i don't know if i can do this show with you anymore <laughs> there'll be a sad panda think of a sad panda what's more oh, traumatizing God. emotionally than a sad panda really i'm going to refrain from answering that because <laughs> moving on coming up april 23rd to 25th is ottawa blues blast in Ontario, go to ottawabluesblast.com for information on that one. Uh, That's for our Canadian listeners. And all, uh, for our I Canadian don't... listeners. We're listen- I don't know if we have listeners. Maybe listener. Hopefully listeners. Uh, huh. If uh, and, and, and as a note, stop it with the alliterative titles. Oh my God, they make my head explode. <laughs> okay. John- Jonathan gets a little tongue-tied when you have titles like Blues Blast or Blues Blazed or Blam Blues Old or whatever they yeah, we, we uh, how many uh, how many takes did we have to do the the bam bambizzled thing, bamboo bamboozled right that one <laughs> I think, yeah I think we did like ten over over the three months that we announced it I think we did it <laughs> forty five times <laughs> I think I got it right once I think I think I got it right <laughs> once maybe and I think all right um yeah moving along moving on let's talk about new music and here's here's what I was talking about um e music is having a sale on. Smithsonian Folkways Blues Titles. We have in the show notes the link to the main page for that. What you get here, and here here we go, tooting the e-music horn again, but um, discs are for eight credits instead of 12. There are some uh, discs on there with something with, a, with over 20 tracks. So we're looking at, I think even on the most expensive per track plan, you're looking at $4 per CD, which is... An incredible bargain, and uh, the quality of the Smithsonian stuff is pretty really darn good. good. It's very good. So I saw the sale uh, yesterday, and I went and spent all of my credits downloading <laughs> Smithsonian albums. So I didn't actually have enough credits to download some of the other songs that um, <laughs> we're featuring today. So I'll they'll, have to go do they'll, that. They'll, they'll be gotten later. before we release. I think. Yeah, but uh, I got really excited. Um, <laughs> So I've got, I've got a couple of songs I want to play for you guys. Uh, the first one is by James P. Johnson. Now, James P. Johnson, you may not have heard the name. I was fairly unfamiliar with him. He is one of the most influential piano players in the history of jazz and blues. And I'm not saying that lightly. This guy was um, around. He was a little bit later than Scott Joplin. He was one of the people who transitioned the uh ragtime style of piano playing into stride piano and you can basically hear a little bit of james p johnson in everyone in fact uh some of the piano roles that he recorded for the player pianos 
Um, some of his stuff, you know, musicians like Duke Ellington learned those note for note from the piano rolls. So this is a guy who influenced Duke. He influenced pretty much uh, everyone. He taught. I, he taught. Was it um, was it Jelly Roll Morton? He taught Jelly Roll Morton to play. Uh, maybe. Is that I, what it was? I'm not. It was. I'm not sure about that. I know that he's one of the guys that other piano players write songs about and in in uh in 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 deference to him and they say things like when i grow up i want to play piano like james p johnson and that this is the that this is that guy for a lot of piano players through the uh up, up through jazz jazz's development jazz and blues all right so anyway um I've talked way too much about it, so let me let me play you the track. The track is called Hesitation Blues. Watch your face, can't talk to my friend. For last night long, the wires all down. Tell me how long, while I have to wait. Oh, won't you tell me now? So, um, that song, if you look that one up on all music, there are 191 instances of that song, um, in all music's database. And then I think there are another like 70 or 80 under a slightly different spelling. This song has been covered by a ton of people, including the asylum street, including the spankers. Um, so, you know, they're God's favorite band. They're one of my favorite bands. (laughs) um did we did we do that last we time did did we last do the god's favorite yeah. band okay just making sure um all right <laughs> let's move on um off the album classic blues i want to play for you a track called nickels worth a liver let me go on and play the track so we'll do two quick musics and then um i'll talk about the artist edith north johnson and henry brown I got a man upstairs, one downstairs, one across the street. You got your eyes wide open, but you're sound asleep. Now I wish you'd be good to me, need you to be kind to me. Won't you be nice, darling? Won't care what you do. Just don't leave me, then I don't know what I do. So Edith North Johnson was the wife of a record producer, Jesse Johnson. She was not a professional singer or piano player, but she was one of those blues ladies that um, recorded in the late 20s. So she put down 18 sides in 1928 and 1929. Um, Obviously, that recording was much later. Uh, The quality was way too good for, you know, a a 20s recording. But after after her recording stint, she moved to St. Louis, where in World War II, she ran a fleet of taxis. And owned a popular diner. That's fantastic. I thought you, you can't make this up. You really can't. Um, this track was recorded for the uh, Folkways label in 1961 in her hometown of, or in her, I guess, acquired town of St. Louis. So uh, good on you, St. Louis. Very nice. Good times um, there. Yeah. So those are just um, a couple of the albums that are... Uh, that was from from classic blues. The first one was from classic piano blues. All of these albums that are on the uh, Smithsonian Folkways label are on sale. The sale ends March 9th, so you do have some time to go and get them, but be quick about it. Yeah, go go um, get, it, some, get it done. There is some yeah, there's some really great older stuff. Yeah. And I, I know that I know a couple of folks who rant and rave about those collections. Um and we'll we'll actually reference back to some of that stuff here in a minute. All right, a couple of tunes from me here. Um, I haven't gone through the uh, the Smithsonian stuff yet on eMusic, so I don't have stuff from that to contribute. I have other music, though. A uh, little, little something, a uh, old little something new for you. First, uh, good old Magic Sam. Magic Sam's another one of those guys who, who lived that blues life. Not really quite by choice. I mean, he, uh, he joined, he was drafted into the Army, didn't take so he uh he deserted and went to jail for six months after that and given a dishonorable discharge uh and and it kind of messed with him for a while while he was uh in in his career 
Uh, but the the thing for him is that he um he made it big in sixty nine. In nineteen sixty nine, he had a he he played at the Ann Arbor Blues Festival. Got a bunch of bookings uh, over the next you know year or two. He was you know getting ready to take off and had a heart attack at thirty years old, uh, thirty two years of age, and died. So his career, which could have you know gone much further and he could have been much more prolific, and just kind of didn't. But while he was alive, he put out some fantastic music. Uh, the song I wanted to get you guys to hear is uh, "Every Night About This Time." It's off the Essential uh, Magic Sam, uh, the Cobra and Chief recordings from 57 to 61. So it's a little bit earlier in his career. Uh, go ahead and check this out. Every night about this time. All right, so Magic Sam is actually the guitar player on that track, and he's he's got some other stuff where he's really featured. There's a lot of musicians who look to, look up to him. Uh, if you watch the movie The Blues Brothers, they dedicate uh, their version of Sweet Home Chicago to to Magic Sam, uh, the the live performance, I believe. Really, I totally I totally missed it's, that. It's I don't know but... if it's in the the standard movie. I know it's in the uh, the extended cut. The only thing I remember from that extended cut is that scene you always quote about uh, with Pine Top Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like I you've said it so many boom. times that. Nate it! Nate it! That's so fantastic. All right. All right. All right. That one, one segue aside. Simmer down. Simmer down. Simmer. <laughs> All right. Second track for me is by Nathan James and Ben Hernandez. Uh, they were a couple of guys who were out on the West Coast. They uh, did a couple of albums. Really fantastic stuff. Uh, you can go to their. Uh, Facebook page. I'll throw a link to that in the notes when I do the notes. Um, I'm going to apologize now for not having done last month's notes yet. Things have been a little strange here for me. So we'll get that fixed. Um, so anyway, you can get their CDs from them directly. They're also available on eMusic. Uh, the track we want to feature is uh, Lonesome Blues off of uh, Make a Change Sometime. They have another album called Hollerin, uh, which won a couple of awards for uh, for Best New Blues. Uh, they are currently not touring together. Uh, they're, I, I think at least uh, one of them is performing, uh, pursuing a side project right now. Uh, no word on whether they might play again, but we'll see. They can put out some fantastic music. Anyway, check this out right now. So I actually had the privilege of playing band breaks for, uh, along with, with Stephen Watkins for oh, Nathan right. and Ben. Yeah. Yeah. When they, uh, yeah, Martin brought them in and they played all three late nights for Emerald City Blues Festival 2008, which, um, unfortunately I ended up missing a lot of their, their set, um, being, uh, down at the I was bar, gonna say being but... <laughs> drunk. That's best. I... <laughs> oh, now, 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 now. I wasn't okay, not wasn't drunk, that bad. Drinking. I ain't drunk. I'm drinking, just drinking. Not drunk. That's right. That... Uh, no, it was just. <laughs> you know, it, it, every once in a while, you just gotta. You know, you gotta cut loose if you've been working all weekend. Anyway, um, those guys were a fantastic act. I am a little bit disappointed that they're not touring anymore, just because they never came to Austin. True. True. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I never got a chance to see them live, and I'm kind of bummed about that yep but you know there are a couple of the albums are on e-music there is an album that they did with uh carl sunny leland that is not on e-music and that was the album that the black rattler track that got really popular for a little while came off of um i don't know how to find that one it might be on cd baby but i haven't i haven't looked out there all right so i have a one more track a little bit of a bonus track for you guys by the way from the smithsonian stuff yep 
Um, <laughs> and this is uh, in the. No, I said know. I'd have been drunk too. Yeah, yeah. In the uh, in the Piedmont style, the uh, the Ray Charles track "I Got a Woman" by Marvin and Turner Fadrell. She's good to me. Oh yeah. Oh, I got a woman way old town. She's good to me. Oh yeah. She's my baby. Can't you understand? Cause I'm her loving man. Oh, I got a woman way old town. She's good to me. Oh yeah. Don't you know it's all right? All right, I enjoyed that, which is a little different for me because I've heard other versions of Ray Charles tunes done that were so pathetically terrible and just unenjoyable to listen to, to dance to, to do anything. Um, I got a version of Nighttime is the Right Time that makes me want to pull my ears off and throw them across the room because <laughs> it's, so, it's so bad. Which, which one is that? Um, I uh, let me take a second. I'll find it. All right. Well, while you're it's looking a, for that, while you're looking for that, there are 784 song results for "I Got a Woman" on All Music. Uh, granted, you know about 300 of them are Ray Charles, but you know this song has been covered by the Monkees. So you know, I think I think if you were to just throw a dart at the, uh, if you were to print print out the list and throw a dart at the uh, at the songs, you may not actually get a. Uh, necessarily a great version of the track yeah so, well Rick- hold, hold on I'll, I'll play the uh the version by the, the version that i hate of oh. nighttime is the right time all right it's got all angela right. straley in it which is the worst part okay because i like her all right wait for it the, the money part is coming That oh just my rips god! My soul. Oh my! Oh my god! That's awful, isn't it? <laughs> wow! <laughs> I almost um, want to play that and say, "Don't ever play this." But it's Elvin Bishop featuring uh, John Bishop. Nemeth. Elvin Bishop. Yeah, who the hell are you, Elvin Bishop? You're I've somebody... heard that name before, but yes, you have. It's wow! Floating. That yeah. was awful. That's it's so bad. It's it's. Yeah, there there really aren't words for I mean, so so when it comes to like Ray, there's guys who do it right, there's guys who do it loyally, there's guys who do it with a little twist but still make it worthwhile, and then there's that. And oh, just withers my soul. <laughs> All right. Speaking of soul. Speaking uh, of soul. No, actually I I started a uh a, a month hopefully monthly soul night here in Austin. Um our first night was the 17th and sure. uh, we had like a hundred and something people. It went off pretty damn well. And uh, I got to play soul man. Unironically. <laughs> did, did you leap from your DJ booth to dance to it? I did not leap from the DJ booth. I did not. Um, the downside to soul music is that all the tracks are only two and a half minutes long. Oh, so sorry. I spent most of the time looking for the next song to play. Uh, <laughs> You're so like, yeah, yeah, you, you really kind of had to be on a hair trigger the whole time doing that. Really, yeah, and it, you know, it's it's a it's not a dance so much as it is like a club gig where dancers with a with an awesome dance floor. So the format is a little bit different. There's a little bit, a lot less silence in between tracks. You kind of have to keep the music going. So I had to be kind of riding the the console the whole time. Um, but you know. If you're if you're interested in that kind of stuff, if you're going to be in Austin on a Wednesday night, um, the stuff I'm doing for that is at pigfootproductions.com. Um, so check it out. We've got a blues night coming up March the third, which I can't imagine anyone listening to this will listen to it before March the third. But if if you're in town, check it out. Yeah, there'll uh, be more. Yeah, we're working on it. All right. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'd, I'd mentioned my dance, but we only get twenty to thirty people in Denton. I'm working on that. Actually, it's it's a it's a little bitty community, so it's all good. 
Denton is an hour north of Dallas, so if yes. that's uh it, it may as well be in Afghanistan for a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, which if you think about it, blues dancing in Afghanistan would be kind of awesome to begin with. It's not in Oklahoma, so it could be worse. Oh. Well, that's funny because I actually have folks from Oklahoma who drive to Denton to come dance. It's like there you that, go. I have folks from Case driving, point. Yeah, driving from Tulsa. That's not the short trip. That's a long drive. So Evidently, yeah, blues has a, uh, a little more appeal sometimes than you think. Anyway, <coughs> moving on. Coming back, back on track. Uh, we mentioned the Grammys in the last show. Uh, we didn't say who won, so because we didn't know yet. Now we know. Um, <laughs> uh, knowing is half the battle. Gee, no, I'm not. Doing that. So uh, our uh, the winner on Breast traditional blues album was a uh, Ramblin' Jack Elliott. My choice, I thought was a good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I, I I can't reach through the microphone to pat you on the back. So. I, I I win the cookie. I get a cookie. <laughs> Be careful, it might kill you. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> so uh, we wanted to hit another track off of that real quick. Uh, that album's on eMusic now too, so you can go get it there as well as on Amazon. Uh, the track is "Grinning in Your Face." I mentioned it on the when we were going over it last time. This is the song you've heard from Ruthie Foster and. Sunhouse, Sunhouse and a bajillion other people. But now Ramble Jack block. doesn't, and it's yeah. yeah. So go ahead and check it out. Keep a grin in your face. Don't mind people grinning in your face. You just bear this in mind. A true friend is hard to find Don't you mind people grinning in your face You know your mother That is some power That is nothing but a dirge But wow, that'll move you That has to move you yeah, it reminds me a lot of uh, Johnny Cash's treatment that he did of the the Nine Inch Nails song "Hurt," <laughs> which is that so Ameri- good. As yeah, well. that American Four album. I have, I own that actually, yeah. and I love that track. Yeah, actually, that and that 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 whole album has got such great music on it. I mean, the version of uh, "Bridge Over Troubled Waters" also actually pretty good. Yep. But anyway, so now now that we've segued that far out into the stratosphere, uh, let's the uh, there was also the award. For best contemporary blues album, that was by the Derek Trucks Band. Uh, the album already free. Uh, the track we're gonna play is Don- "Down Don't Bother Me." Uh, this is av- available on Amazon, not on eMusic yet. So ch- uh, check this out. There's some other uh, albums on eMusic, uh, but anyway, give it a listen. Before I before I click uh, play the track here real quick, just um, I, when I was listening to this, I was I was listening to the previews. A lot of this stuff falls outside the realm of what I would really want to hear for blues dancing, but um, I I think it's important that we you know give you an idea of what's what is important to the music industry, like what what you're going what's going to be popular or important from that. So um, the track is down. Don't bother me. Check it out. Traveling with no memory. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Keith and I were talking while we uh, listened to that, and it's for both of our our, our you know two copper plated pennies uh, worth there. It's. It's just not remarkable. I mean, it's it's good. It's solid. It's interesting to listen to. But I mean, it's if it's something that we wanted to put out, it's not something that we would want to put out on a dance floor. Uh, but that's that's just us. Well, I, f- I feel like it it's almost diverged a little bit too much from what blues is about culturally, and it's kind of taken the blue. It's got you know blues influence, but I don't feel like it's in any way, shape, or form blues 
of the blues tradition anymore. It doesn't have any significance to me that that you know this could be any kind of pop rock album that you hear now where those roots were there a long time ago but the people playing today are influenced by the people who are influenced by blues and not directly by blues. Yeah, considering that we haven't even finished, you know, scratching at the crust of what blues music is, has been available for the last hundred years. I mean, or in the first part of the last hundred years, let's not worry about what's in the last part of the of this hundred years. We can, we've still got plenty to go through. Yeah. I mean, and I think it's important that we, you know, that even the music industry makes a distinction between traditional blues and contemporary blues. So, right. Um, exactly. We tend to focus almost strictly on traditional blues. Uh, there are other people who talk about the other stuff. So, you know, you're not going to get that terribly much here other than when we we have something of note like the grammys all right um it's february it's time to talk about uh my little valentine's feature i have chosen this year to do songs about jelly roll because you know it jelly rolls are sweet and baked goods and baked goods are appropriate for valentine's day that's all they are and if you believe it's all it is any of that um i have a bridge for you so um, let's uh have, have i have i have, i i had i had to tell us the story you i think you I, um, didn't you tell it before didn't, didn't I, we do it like I in the first so, episode where, where I, I had to explain to some to a poor girl i was dancing with what a jelly roll might also be construed as <coughs> all right that, that was awkward <laughs> it's still a little awkward um i feel awkward so let's uh let's roll right into it the first song is called jelly jelly it's by Lowell Fulson, although I don't believe he wrote it. Check it out. Hello, baby. I had to call you on the phone. Hello, baby. So Lowell Fulson was one of the more influential blues singers and songwriters in that West Coast blues tradition. Uh, We mentioned him briefly in episode number five. He was uh, originally born in Oklahoma, but like we said before, you know, not much there. So he moved to California (laughs) in the early 40s and he formed a band which included a young Ray Charles. Uh, A lot of people left Oklahoma in the 30s and 40s. Yeah, that was, um, was that? Right after the Dust Bowl, yeah, that, that, not not such Is a good time there. Yeah, after uh, I think after the Dust Bowl. So if you saw the movie Ray, uh, which if you haven't and you're listening to the show, go pause, now. Pause the podcast. Stop. Go get Ray. Watch it, and then come back. Um, <laughs> we're, not, actually- <laughs> we're not even kidding. I'll drive to your house and bring this to you. You need to watch this. Seriously, I will. <laughs> just stop what you're doing and do this. You're, you're that that that's one that'll help you get the point. It's it's really great. Okay, go so if you, so now that you've seen the movie, um, <laughs> Lowell Folsom was portrayed you, by. And Chris if you Thomas have seen King. it, stop and watch it again. Yeah. But, yeah. So yeah, Lowell Folsom was portrayed by Chris Thomas King, who we talked about in episode number four. So you know it's it's circular. A lot of these guys are everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah. The song. That song is a great song. It's an it's an old song. A lot of guys have done it. Uh, there's, I mean, the, the, my personal favorite is uh, by Lincoln Center uh, Jazz Orchestra. There, uh, and I don't know who they have singing on it, but instead of that, that the uh, Lowell's, you know, jelly jelly, it's this this deep bass, like, and I'm I'm not even gonna try to to, to do it. I can't, I make it. It's, Hello, baby. Yeah, I'd and like I, to call you on the phone. And you're not even coming I mean, close. No, and like, I'm, I'm higher than he is. This guy is ridiculous. Yeah, and and, it, and what he sings with, his, and, and it's Lincoln Center. So I mean, the the instrumentation is fantastic, and and it's it's all awesome. But that voice just just carries it home for me. Yeah. Moving on. Um, the next track is called Jelly Roll Baker. So, like I said, you know, big goods. 
Um, this <laughs> this one is by Frankie Lee Sims. Uh, check it out. It's good for a sick baby. Yes, and it's good for old. I'm known as Jelly Roll Baker, baby, best in your town. On a Jelly Roll Baker, baby, best Jelly Roll Baker in your town. So, uh, Jonathan pointed out while we were listening to the track that it's it's very obviously that. Texas guitar sound uh, you hear it with uh, T-Bone and Lightning Hopkins and it's interesting because Frankie Lee Sims is actually a cousin of Lightning Hopkins um, he primarily unlike unlike Lightning who got all over the place um, Frankie mostly played around Texas and he recorded pretty prolifically as a country blues artist into the 50s which was unfortunate for him because the country blues revival happened in the 60s and he he missed that this guy, here's another one of your uh, blues lifestyle folks, Jonathan. Yeah. He died at the age of 53 in Dallas of pneumonia. At that time, he was reportedly in trouble with the law due to a shooting incident, and he had been dogged by a drinking problem. So he was, he had a drinking problem, shot somebody, I think, and uh, <laughs> died of pneumonia. So there you go. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I, there you I, go. Don't, I don't know if I want to linger on this blues thing too long, man. <laughs> <laughs> just don't gonna... don't start playing i mean you know oh okay so if i don't touch a guitar i'm fine as long as you you know don't sell your soul uh don't go to the crossroads and you know don't play guitar all right yeah it's like because yeah. it seems like the piano players are fine uh yeah i mean pine top still you know he's what 97 yeah. exactly and yeah you play piano around. you live forever play guitar <laughs> yeah, you're in a hole on the ground hit, he got hit by a car <laughs> and know, it's still so. going <laughs> Um, I saw no, I saw Pine Top um, on my birthday. Did I, did I yeah. talk about that? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you did. No, tell I tell saw, me, tell me. I saw him on my birthday, and uh, he was playing with Willie Big Eyes Smith. Guy is still up there. He's still he's still doing it. And you know, I honestly think that people really need to go and see some of these old guys live while they're still around, because the way that they sing these songs, there's something that if you're not watching them perform, I don't think you get it. And it's something that if you're in their presence, they can make you feel things that you don't get just listening to the CDs. So if you're a blues dancer and you haven't seen any real live blues, especially these older guys, um, make an effort to, if it comes to your town, to go see it. So um, anyway, moving on to to old blues, um, this uh, this one is is more of the New Orleans tradition, which I'm I'm going into Jonathan's Ballywick in this episode. Don't touch my <laughs> <So>. ballywick. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just that cracks me up. Yeah, hey, I, I, I threw that one before I was even in the room. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> that one came out of nowhere. Okay. I so this next track is uh definitely in the New Orleans tradition. It's called I Ain't Gonna Give Number. I ain't gonna give nobody none of this jelly roll. And it's by Lizzie Miles with Sharky and his Kings of Dixieland. Oh, I ain't gonna give nobody none of my jelly roll. My jelly roll. I wouldn't give you a piece of this cake not to save your soul. Cause my mama told me today before she went away. If I'd be a good girl, she'd put my hair in curls. I am a pride and joy. There ain't no use. Lizzie Miles actually has a pretty interesting story. She was born in uh, New Orleans in 1895. She traveled widely with minstrel and circus shows in the uh, 1910s. And then... Uh, made her first record or <clears throat> made her first recordings in New York of blue songs in 1922. So she actually predates some of the, uh, the, the really popular blues women. Um, yeah, just, just in different art forms, right. Different she, styles. And she didn't really consider herself a blue singer since she sang a wide variety of music. She did, you know, the minstrel songs and, and so on. Um, in the mid twenties, she spent time in Paris before returning to the U.S., 
She then suffered a serious illness and retired from the music industry in the 30s. In the 40s, they talked her back into singing again. And when she came back, she would always sing either in front of or beside the stage because she had sworn in a prayer or she had vowed in a prayer. So I guess you don't swear in prayer. She had vowed in a prayer to never go on stage again if she recovered from her illness. That's that's so she sang. So she sang for the rest of her life from the side of the stage or or in front of it, which I mean, that's fantastic. Um, She appeared in 58 at the Monterey Jazz Festival. And then in 59, she stopped singing again, except for gospel. And then she died from a heart attack in 1963. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, you know, we say 1963, uh, some of the guys we talk about in 1963, they'd been they were 30. She was uh, 68, 68. So in 1963, 68 was, you know, pretty decent lifespan. So uh, a long and storied life for Lizzie Miles. And she really like lived right through the heart of jazz and blues. I mean, right through the origins of all of that. Yeah. And, and spent time in Paris. Like I think every other jazz musician and most of the blues guys did at some point. Like, it's like, you know, you, you, you get through, especially through that period, you get, you get solid and then you go to France. I mean, well, Louis did it. Yeah. It was one of those places where black musicians could play without prejudice. Right. I mean, it's, um, or without uh, as much prejudice. Yeah, exactly. There's a, uh, an old album from a uh, 33 by a group called uh, spike Hughes and his Negro orchestra. This is, uh, I believe a, a, a UK release, uh, from that period, but it's guys that if you're paying attention to swing and jazz musicians, Benny Carter, red Allen, Coleman Hawkins, a Jay Z Higginbottom there. They all went overseas to record. Because they just couldn't get the respect and that they wanted here, and they they and they put out some amazing music over there. Did you say Henry Red Allen? I did, in fact, say Henry Red Allen. Yeah, uh, you know he was on my my list of uh, notable blues artists for yeah. 2010. And so and most of the is. most of the material that's on the, that's on this release, and this is on E Music too, uh, is actually. Um, yeah, did did you actually just go find that? Yeah, I just went and found it. So yeah, I mean, I'll download it when I have credits again, like yeah. in April. Well, most of this stuff is 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 swing, so it's going to be like swing style music. It's not going to be blues, That's but fine. there's a it's great music, and uh, but it's exactly the same thing. Guys going overseas. I mean, Sidney Bechet did it, and uh, I mean, he got kicked out of the country once, I think, <laughs> uh, and then came back. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I I also wanted to comment on the on your choice of tune here. Uh, I ain't going to give nobody none of this jelly roll. It's this kind of like paradigm. I mean, you talk about them baked goods. I mean, mama talking about sharing. You got to share. But I mean, she doesn't want you sharing that. I don't know what she's talking about. I mean, it seems like you should share, you know, pastry. You just have to listen to the whole track. Um, yeah. So that's on your music. Go download it. Um, <clears throat> finally, uh, a track that needs. Or a track by an artist who needs no introduction. This next track is Jelly Roll Blues. It's by Louis Armstrong. Check it out. So there are about 8,000 different versions of uh, Jelly Roll Blues. Um, <laughs> and, and it was originally written all by... Fan- okay, they're not all, but they're probably mostly pretty good. I mean, they were originally written by Jelly Roll Morton, and um, I have a version that's really, from him that's really in the early, uh, that very early kind of ragtime-y feel, which, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play. It just doesn't have the right movement to it. Um, Louis Armstrong is Louis Armstrong. If you don't know who Louis Armstrong is... You're, I don't know how you found this podcast. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Man. Go find a copy right. of the Hot Fives and Hot Sevens. Man. Listen to those. Then go find him playing with Duke Ellington. Listen to that. Then and Ella then Fitzgerald. Ju- and then Blid. Then- listen to him with Ella. And then right. just 
and then maybe just go watch a movie with uh, Meg Ryan in it, and it probably has some of his music. <laughs> and uh, and then and then you'll be covered. Okay. Um, while we were listening to that last one, I actually was was we were digging through looking at the Jelly Roll Morton stuff, but I found one more track which I didn't actually have in the notes. Um, but you know, hey, you know we're we're playing it fast and loose here in the uh, Jelly Roll section. So this track is called Whiskey and Jelly Roll oh Blues. My it's by God. It's by oh. Wynoni Harris. Check it out. I've loved you a long time, baby. Never had the nerve to tell you so. Well, now I'm glad I told you. Yes, and I'm glad that you know. All right, so that one doesn't look like it's on eMusic. It is on the Winoni Harris proper box set, Rockin' the Blues. Uh, there's a lot of really great stuff on there, although it is in that jump vein, so you got it can get tedious. Um, so listen in batches, I guess. Anyway, uh, Jelly Roll for Valentine's Day. Yeah. Hope you dig it. All right. Promised months ago. But finally, I'm getting around to it. Uh, we'll be talking about the work song. Jonathan, the, what what's a work song? A work song. Let's the, the there are several answers to this that you might come up with. We're going to go with the Captain Obvious answer here, which is uh, basically music sung while working. But it's more. <laughs> but more importantly, what it is is to. It's something done to coordinate the people working. Uh, generally, very, very rhythmic. Um, very, uh, uh, it, it's very, very much a pattern that's going to get everyone moving together. Um, now, a work song isn't just, you know, the black folk in the fields, you know, which is kind of the easy, quick definition that you'll kind of understand as a work song. I mean, uh, work songs kind of fall into a bunch of car- uh, different categories. I mean, there's there's field work, but then there's also uh, things like sea shanties, which are considered work songs. Uh, a lot of uh, some Western music uh, is considered. Uh, I mean, there's cowboy music songs that are basically work songs. There's a basically uh, there's a, a movement in, in the 18th century in Britain for folk songs that are basically the same thing. Protest songs, same thing. It's basically cool. just music that pulls people together into a singular rhythm. Whether that rhythm is, you know, rocking back and forth and, you know, resisting the man or, you know, you know, digging your pickaxe into the side of the road while you're doing work, while you're, you know, chopping it up to, to lay down a new, you know, an expanded road, that's fine. It's all a work song. You're not talking about the Bob Dylan folky kind of protest music you actually mean the music the 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 songs that people would sing while they were in the process of marching or picketing right 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 okay. i mean i mean if you're I mean literally people just rocking back and forth you know just you know the, the just i mean generally the the, the origin for this music what we'll, 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 we'll what we'll do for the sake of um sticking with our genre here is we are going to focus on kind of the field song in this case i mean like i said there's a couple of different influences one influence is the slaves brought over uh, that worked in the fields. I mean, they started off uh, with, you know, their, their tribal instruments, drums, things like that. And they'd play while they worked. Eventually in the fields and, uh, and, you know, just in general, drums were banned because uh, slave owners were afraid that, that the slaves would, you know, use the drums to communicate and uh, organized rebellion. These were actually they were actually afraid of that. So drums were banned. So they would uh, one of the things they could do is they it, it, they would uh, pat Juba or Yuba. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, basically, it's using your hands on your body to create sounds to create rhythm. So that's why you would see guys, you know, with like uh, uh, one hand on the on each shoulder, like a right hand on left shoulder, left hand on right shoulder. 
and you'd you'd kind of get that sound, and you would pad out a rhythm with it. Uh, and I, I, what you would get is people who would be improvising songs. Now in the field, you can't say, "Well, you know, the overseers," you know. You can't comment directly about those people. You can't comment about the owners. You can't comment. I mean, because they'll just pull you out and beat you. So, I mean, the, they, they'd use a lot of times as, as they're as these same groups are um, are assimilating Christianity. They would take the symbols from Christianity. They take the characters and assign them to those characters. So you'd you'd get, have a field song that's talking about Pharaoh letting my people go. They're talking about the owners and the overseers, and and those folks. This is not a simply, like I said, just a a black slave motion. This is this. I mean, using music or using a drum to organize movement has been is thousands of years in the making. But when we're talking about blues music, generally we're talking about the these songs that were that came up in the fields. And we, I have a few examples here. I pulled all of the examples for this uh, off of a, um, a recording done uh, that, that's basically a, a recording done in prisons in Texas uh, from the 30s up through the 50s. These may not necessarily be the same songs, but they have the same elements, the same rhythm, the, the, um, and some of the other same primary components. One of the big things that you get out of this, and this is something that we use in dance, and in, in when we hear dance instructors talk about this as well as in regards to the music, is call and response. Literally, one guy sings, the rest of the guys respond. So do you have, a, do you have an example of this, Jonathan? I do. I do. Yeah, and the, the uh, recordings were all done by uh, John and Alan Lomax. They went around through the South uh, in the the early 20th century, and we're just finding musicians to record. I mean, they recorded Muddy Waters, guys like that, uh, but they also went to... to uh, th- this is done, uh, this particular recording, Long John, was done in a Darrington State Prison Farm in 1934 here in Texas. And this is basically the song that they'd sing while they're splitting rocks. So, here's the song. So in that, you hear that that call and response back and forth. And if you picture it in your mind, you can see the one lead guy, uh, the lead singer, bringing down an axe or or pickaxe. Bring here the next guys, just following the same thing. And it's just it's that rhythmic motion. It's that consistent motion of just you know when you do any job. But it in this case. It translates to music, whether you're in slavery, whether you're in prison. It's it becomes something that's more than just, you know, moving you as a physical motion. I mean, this is emotional and spiritual sustenance for people. Uh, This is music that carries you beyond your plight. Uh, So the call and response element is a big thing. Um, Like I said, and, and when we're talking about field music, these are slaves that are assimilating Christianity as they as they are going through their years in this new land. So, uh, like I said, you, you get a lot of, of, uh, of uh, there's a lot of emotion in this because this is emotionally laden music. I mean, this is all about people just trying to get through each day. I mean, when you talk about living from day to day, this is it. There's, there is nothing more than this day to day. You just hope that you get onto the next day and maybe something will be different in the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And every time all you're doing is just, you know, Keep it on. Um, the next song that I kind of want to focus on is another one called is, is called Old Rattler. And now this is Keith and I actually talked a little bit about this song before we picked it. And this one's a little rough because basically the song 
if you if you take the song at surface level, it's just about it's about a dog who can you know who who hunts folks down who've escaped, basically hunting down escaped prisoners or slaves. In this case, the, uh, part of the reasons that this that this album I picked work uh, kind of works for this is because the situations just aren't that different. They really meld together. Listen to the sample for the song, and I'll talk about it a little more. So you listen to that, I mean, that's obviously a, a song that's, we're talking about, you know, hunting people down to return them to their plight. I mean, and that's on, again, on this, on one level, there's actually another part of it where if you keep listening to it, it's actually more along the lines of, okay, that's not what this is about. This, you know, the dog will run forever, but so will the guy running. It's just as much about that guy. I mean, it's, it's very much uh, a measure of strength. Now, one of the things that in both the songs you notice, and and then pretty much you know what you'll see on work songs is that the most you'll get for a company with this accompaniment for with these is a drum. There really isn't more that goes with it. The work song, if you want to look at it in some ways, is the basis for music. Period. I mean, there really isn't much more to it. it it's rhythm plus emotion. If you put those two things together, you get music. And, and you combine combine that with, I mean, the, the the emotion can be broken into the, your desire to be free, your desire to be wealthy, your desire to be married, loved, anything. It's all the same thing. It all adds up. And what you end up with is, very specifically, this the songs that were being sung in the fields. And, and when I say sung in the fields, I'm not talking about just during slavery. I'm talking about afterwards. Uh, when you get into reconstruction, you get into sharecropping days. I mean, it didn't just go away. It just might have changed topic a little bit. I was going to say, let me just jump in real quick. Is mm-hmm. If you ever watch any any uh, military movies or anything like that, when they are, you know, if you're, if you're in the military, if you know someone who's in the military, when they run in cadence, that's a work song. Yeah, um, it's exactly. It's the same. It's the same thing. So we still, we still have this kind of thing, you know, even today. We just don't attach to it quite the stigma that we attach to the word work song um, with its historical uh, perspective. Exactly. And the point in regards to this show is that you have these songs that are that coming that are coming up through slavery. You have musicians in the late 19th century who are growing up guys like W.C. Handy. Charlie Patton, guys that really laid they they hear this music. I mean, along with the fact that they're they're also hearing uh, vaudeville and they're hearing uh, they're they're hearing the the different styles of music that are being performed at the time. Their their foundation is this. So as you go along, the, the, I mean, these musicians take that. This is the music they grow up with. This is the music they hear. And then you take that, you know, a step further and they're performing the same songs, but with instrumentation that's a, mo- a little more European, you might say. One of the things that, um, that I, I, and I, by the way, a great book to look at this is uh, Robert Palmer's Deep Blues. A really interesting book. It goes into very nitty gritty detail about where some of these guys picked up their uh, musical influences. Um, you hear how they talk about where they, they, they start to t- take these different elements and put them together to make, to basically start creating what we think of now as blues. Well, I mean, and that's going all the way back to, like we mentioned earlier, Lightning Hopkins and, and, uh, and uh, T-Bone Walker. Those guys were influenced by the guys who came before them. You look at uh, who are so on and so forth back to 
back to the, the field days. And the music just, it, it, like everything does, when you take it and you, and you touch it and you tweak it a little bit, it becomes a little more acceptable. Like one of the things that they, um, that uh, Palmer talks about is that, uh, for example, during, during uh, farming times, they wouldn't talk about cotton. There's, no, there's very few songs that about picking cotton. There are, but there's not many. But there's a lot more about corn because that's the more common crop that they would get to eat coming up through that time. And that passed on. There's more songs about, about picking corn, you know, shucking corn, so on, than there would be about cotton, for example. Uh, kind of touching on the, we'll pick, the last song off that album I want to hear uh, get for y'all is uh, Ain't no, no More Cane on the Brazos. Uh, this is by a guy named uh, uh, James Ironhead Baker and uh, Ernest Williams. Check it out. The matter, something must be wrong. Oh, keep on working, Jordy Joy's I'm gone. Oh, gotta come on the river in 19 we picked three songs here that sound pretty similar and really they do i mean in this case these are people in this these recordings they're prisoners they have no instruments it's a song about basically an escape from bondage the the pursuit from (laughs) if you escape and then about food about feeding you about basically your, your concerns with with staying alive day to day I mean, these songs are about d- daily life. That's what they are for for the time. And I mean, especially in the case of of uh, old Rattler. I mean, that, that's almost something that we don't, we can't even relate to. The idea of a dog being loose to hunt us down is basically kind of like telling me that I can walk straight through the Great Wall of China. I mean, it's almost completely inconceivable. I don't care what David Copperfield says. But the point is, is, I mean, for the topic matter of these songs, it matters. And that's why, I mean, when you hear protest songs, when you hear protest songs out of context, they almost sound silly at times. When you put them in context in your mind, it becomes something of great weight. And that's the same. That's part of the reason why blues music really has the weight it does, because It's taking the songs from those contexts and it's making them a little more acceptable and a little more acceptable and a little more acceptable with each sort of evolution through music. So really, that's what I'm hearing from all of this. And, you know, I I haven't had the, the opportunity to research as much as Jonathan, but the work song is a song about everyday life. And what we tell people over and over again is that blues is the music of life. That's why blues is so accessible. To people even today is that things like not having any money, not having a job, not, you know, having trouble with someone of, of the opposite sex, uh, you know, love problems. Those things are human experience things that we all share. And that's one of the reasons why it's so easy to latch on to the message of blues. And it's one of the reasons that as the musical styles of blues have changed, the messages have not. So Buddy Guy is still, you know, today is still singing about the same kind of stuff that Lightning Hopkins and Sunhouse and Buka White were singing about in the 30s. Um, you know, the stuff that that these folks in the 20s, you know, Bessie Smith was singing about. We still, you know, singing about a party. You know, give me a pigfoot and a bottle of beer. It's it's a party song. It's no different than Into Club. It's it's the same stuff. So you take this to kind of to kind of wrap this up because we've been talking too much and move on my fault um is that the work song was a a rhythmic form that came into blues because that was what people knew you had instruments and stir you're still singing about life right so as your life changes the songs that you're singing the the songs that you're singing change right The, Um, the the other uh yeah the only other mechanical element that you get out of it out of the out of the traditional work song is basically the blue note that flat third in the song. 
and that's the other thing that 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 carries through into in in musical styling into the blues but i mean we're, i mean that's that's starting to get a little more meticulous than i'm i'm really prepared to be i'm afraid but, that explaining the blue note is probably musically for me definitely is outside the purview of the show yeah we 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 uh, need, yeah definitely a musician for that one definitely need a musician right. for that one so henrik <laughs> i hope that answers your question if it if it um, doesn't please tell me <laughs> cuz i cuz i'm a little uh wanting to make sure i'm co- i'm co- kind of covering what what you wanted to hear with that but yeah i feel like that really is uh the foundation of what we're talking about here and let's be let's be very clear here work songs are not appropriate music for a social dance ever no well don't just i mean if if you want to co- go and try and find one a situation that's fine but in general this music is so culturally and historically tied to a specific uh time it doesn't make sense to try to dance to it um in a social context here yeah it, it's it's it is very limited and the music itself is very limited i mean that and that's kind of the point of it i mean you the uh there's a difference between that and what you would hear at a party uh, you know during a weekend in, in in the same period but the work song ties in because it's it, it, it's not that different musically it's just that you can do as much with it. all right let's um let's close that topic and let's uh start to wrap up the show let's uh move on to our feedback for this month First of all, um, I got an email from Wendell Ramsey, who is a dancer and photographer here in Austin, and he wrote in for episode number six. Nice session. I don't plan to go DJ on anyone, but if I did, you guys set me straight from the jump. Catch you later. Um, Thanks for writing in, Wendell. Uh, We really appreciate it. You can check out his work at clpfyi.com, and that'll be in the show notes. Uh, We also had an email from a from Kristen Buxton, who DJed at uh, ALX this November. Uh, she said, uh, I just recently found the podcast, so I'm catching up. So apologies if you've covered this sometime since. One thing I would be cool would be to feature instrumental blues songs. I find that I tend to end up playing lots and lots of female vocalists. Thanks for putting the show together. You're in luck, Kristen, because that's next month's show. We're working on getting that together right now. We've got some really fantastic music, and I'm going to try not to talk about Duke Ellington for 30 minutes again. Because right, it's well, really easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, and thanks for the suggestion. It's it's stuff like that that really kind of helps us figure out where to go with the program. Exactly. Um, finally, we had a, a letter from Kate Bramley Moore from Gothenburg, Sweden. She says, hey there, guys. I first heard the October podcast and there was some feedback from someone in Sweden about the lack of blues dancing. I'm happy to say that in just a month, there will be some fabulous blues going on in Gothenburg. I moved here from Australia about a year ago, and while the Lindy Balboa and Boogie Woogie here is fantastic, the blues scene and knowledge is non-existent to really small. So I decided to do something about it. In conjunction with Daniel Human in London, I I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I have managed to wangle Damon Stone and... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Don't torment her for a typo. Look, look, you know, maybe that means something in, in Australia that it doesn't mean to me. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but she's got uh, Damon and Bryn uh, coming to teach a blues weekend in Gothenburg. She says, I'm fabulous, fabulously excited about it and wanted to let you and your listeners know. Blues is coming to Sweden and she's hopeful that they'll have a developing scene over the coming years so that Gothenburg will be a great place for blues dancers to visit. Um, she concludes with thanks for the podcast. You've given me things to think about and more music to search for, for my DJ collection. Um, that Damon and Bryn workshop is March 20 to 21st, and you can read more about what's going on in Gothenburg on their website, www.wcj.nu. The website is completely in Swedish. The WCJ is for West coast jitterbug, which as an American really confused me until I realized they were talking about the West coast of Sweden and not West coast swing. <laughs> um, which, which, also, which translates just about as well as the actual site does in Google translate. So Google translate does give you a pretty good idea of what they're talking about there. Um, one, I think it's actually fantastic because uh, one of the 
specific translations on the site. I'm going to, I'm going to read this to you from, from the Google translation page. Um, and I realize that it's unintentional, but it's absolutely fantastic. And it reminds me a little bit of something that, uh, Henry Rollins did in one of his, uh, talking shows once the translation is the band can be due to the snow does not get to Duke's place tonight. So tonight, Duke's place, a reduced entry fee, and the dance becomes our cruel DJ's music indeed. Welcome. So the venue is Duke's place. And let me let me read it one more time for effect. <laughs> the band can be due to the snow, does not get to Duke's place tonight. So tonight, Duke's place, a reduced entry fee, and the dance becomes our cruel DJ's music instead. Welcome. And I I don't know what you're doing in Sweden, but if you have cruel DJs, I, I'm I'm curious as to what constitutes cruelty. I, I would like to extend a laurel and hearty handshake to the cruel DJs <laughs> in Sweden <laughs> and uh and uh, congratulate them on their efforts and send them, ask them to email and let us know how to become more cruel. <laughs> Damon and Brynn, we expect a report on the cruelty of DJing in uh in Sweden. Okay, um, have, we, have we abused them enough yet, Keith? I know, I know, me talking is bad enough, but I mean, have we done enough? Have we have we wounded them? Thank you, thank you, Kate, for writing in, and thank you, uh, Swedes, for your fantastic and, translations into English. And thank you, Australians, for evidently like just continuing to like be all somehow all over the world, bringing blues everywhere. Well, and also for writing to us. Yes. I don't know what it is, what it is about Americans, and why we're so afraid to be vocal with our comments and in in a public forum but you know it it's interesting to me that the vast majority of our comments and also you know by proxy like the comments that that jesse gets on his show are predominantly from overseas and i think that's really interesting yeah. and then um, i would I'd like you're to a bunch that. of wusses americans yeah well we well, well we have some other commentary on that that we will uh we'll look at later yeah um <laughs> dave uh so <laughs> let's uh Let's wrap it up for this month. I think we've we've talked quite a bit. Thank you guys once again for listening to the show. We've got our fantastic blues instrumentals coming up next month along with some feedback. We're going to do a little bit of a piece based on feedback on some of the smaller and more modern blues labels that are putting out music today. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some more feedback after our comments. Maybe we'll get some Cruel DJ comments this month. I'm hoping we can get more Jelly Roll comments this month. Hey, send them in. Uh, feel free to send all of your feedback to info at confessingtheblues.com or 608-432-5837. That's 60theblues. Uh, my name is Keith Shapiro. Thank you guys for listening. And this is Jonathan. Have a good one. Enjoy the show, I hope, and we'll see y'all soon. Mordecai!
to the max. The same pot and scheme did as evil it takes. Well, he came up with a plan to kill all Jews. Cause if he got all of us, he'd give Mordecai too. And Hayden was rotten. Hayden was me. Oh, Hayden was rotten. Hayden was me. Yeah, it might have gotten ugly if it hadn't been a queen. Well, Haman got the royal authority for his terrible thing. Mordecai told Esther, better talk to the king. Esther so said to the king, baby, sit in my place. There's a huge shakuk behind his beautiful face. If Haman kills all my people, your queen will be dead. King said, who knew you were Jewish? Let's kill Haman instead. Well, Haman was rotten. Haman was me. Haman was rotten. Haman was me. Well, I might have gotten ugly if Esther hadn't been a queen.